Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. We've got a great little inline form for you today. We're just using the Divi contact module for this. And we're gonna take a regular contact module and just spread it out like this. Great for people that need a little bit more information. You can collect their name and email and they can just send that to you with a submit button. So let's get started. I'm gonna enable the visual builder so we can build on the front end. And let's go down. I'll delete what I've got here and we'll start from scratch. Actually, before I do that, I'll show it to you on responsive devices. If I just hit the little purple button over the left hand side, let's flip it to iPad and you'll see it'll collapse on an iPad with a little button underneath. And then for a mobile, the two fields will be on top of each other also. Back to desktop and we got our nice inline form again. Okay. Well, let's delete this and we'll start from scratch. Great, well, let's add a new section. Little blue button to add a section. I'm gonna make mine a regular section. I'm gonna put a single column and a single row in there. Or I should say single row and a single column. Inside there, I'm gonna put a Divi contact us form, contact form. There it is right there. I'm gonna leave this for a second. I'm just gonna change the background of our section so everything stands out a bit better. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go into my section, little cog right there, down to background. I'm gonna make mine probably not black, but not far from it, perhaps the next color up right there. Great, that works for me. Just makes everything stand out a little bit better. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is go into my form. I really only want a name and an email. I'm gonna delete the message field. And I don't think I wanna capture on mine as well, seeing as they can't send a message. It's just the name and an email address. So if we roll down a little bit, here's the spam protection. It gives you the option to add a third party service such as Google Recapture if you want to with an API key. I'm gonna turn that off. Great, fantastic. For anybody who doesn't know how to configure the form, I'll just go through it very quickly. There's the two fields we got there. Inside the text, if you need to, you can put a heading. I'm not gonna put a heading purely because it might just unalign my little form when I line it up there. Success message is what's gonna pop up when they hit the submit button there. So let's say message sent or something like that. Submit button, obviously you can change it from submit to whatever you want there. Email, this is the important part. This is where you want to put in your email address, where you want the email to be sent. Message pattern, you can separate fields with percentage signs here and change the way around you want to receive stuff. It's not necessary for this little form today. If you want to, you can redirect them afterwards. I'm not going to do that. And we've just seen where the spam protection is right there. Great, the only other thing I wanna do is I'm just gonna change that button slightly from the generic to a colored background. So I'm gonna go to my design. I'm gonna go down to the button, use custom styles. I'm gonna keep it very simple. Text color, I'm gonna make white. Button background, I'm gonna make purple. And the border, I shall make purple also. Great, and that's all I'm gonna to do to it. You can choose a font and choose a different icon and things when you hover over it. I'm going to leave mine just on the default there. Okay, we're going to have to target this with a bit of CSS in a minute. So I'm going to give it a class just in case you've got other contact forms on your site. So over in the advanced tab, and this is common to all Divi modules, go down to CSS IDs and classes. I'm going to go into CSS class here. I'm going to call mine INLF, which is kind of my shorthand for inline form. Now, if we don't do that, and we've got other contact forms on our site, when I grab a class name in a minute, it's gonna affect all of our forms on our site. So that's why I'm giving it a class name here. Great. Now let's go into our row, green tab for the row, little cog, into the column itself. It's important you go into the column. I'm gonna write a little line of code here. I'm gonna go over to my advanced. I'm gonna go into the custom CSS down to the main element. And don't forget any code I write, I'll put down below. I'm going to say display, colon, flex. And 
And you may have noticed these two have jumped over here, but our button is still on the bottom there. I want that button to be in line with our other form here. So I'm going to put a semicolon on the end of here in case we want to write some more code. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save the row settings. Okay, well, let's save our changes now. If you haven't got it open, open the little purple button at the bottom. Hit save. I'm going to exit the visual builder and inspect this element. I'm going to go down. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to hit inspect. And it'll take us right to it. Let's have a look here. That's the actual button itself. But I want the whole container that it's in, I believe, over here. ET, contact, bottom container. And with the inspector, if you've got elements selected one side, you'll have HTML. And styles on the other, we've got CSS over here. I notice it says float right. So perhaps if I change that to none, it jumps over there, which is fantastic. But to make this stick, I'm going have to have to actually write it either into my additional CSS panel or into a code module on this page. So let's do that. I'm going to select the ET contact bottom container, which is the class name we want. Control C to copy it. Let's drop that down now. We can go back into our visual builder, add a little code module. Once enabled, let's go down. I'm actually going to add a new row because I don't want to put it in our little flex row that we've got there. It doesn't matter how many columns you give it. As it's code, it's not going to take up too much real estate. I'm going to add a code module. OK, well, as we're writing CSS, we need to put some style tags in here. And this is the only bit I can't put down below the video. And a style tag is left pointy bracket, S-T-Y-L-E, right pointy bracket. When you put in the right one, it'll put in the closing bracket for you. You can open those up and inside we'll put our CSS code. If you're using your additional CSS panel for this, you don't need to add style tags. OK, well, we actually gave our contact form a class name of INLF for my shorthand for inline form. So we'll put that class name in. All class names have a dollar or a period. INLF. Then we copied that other class name and there it is. Now we can open and close some curly brackets. I need to force it to not float to the left. So I'm simply going to say float none. And as you can see, it's jumped up there, which is just exactly what we want. Pop a semicolon on there. Great. Well, I'd like to see that sort of more in the middle, but we'll do that in the actual module itself. Let's see what it's going to do on tablet and mobile. Roll on down. There it is on a tablet. Yeah, that's a little bit tight to that corner there. I would perhaps like to have it stacked there. And on mobile, yeah, it's pretty much cutting off the button. So we need to add just a few little lines of code. Let's go back to our desktop mode. I'm going to add a media query. Media queries allow you to set certain screen sizes and, and add your CSS for that particular size. So I'm going to say at media. I'm going to say screen and. Then I'm going to open some round brackets and in between here, we're going to select the screen size. I'm going to say around about 900 pixels. I want this thing to break. So anything that doesn't go any bigger than 900 pixels, I'm going to say max width, max dash width, colon, 900 pixels. Obviously, you do what works for you. And we'll check this out in a minute with the inspector. OK, now I need to, I've made that. I need to open and close some more curly brackets here. And inside that set of curly brackets, we can copy this right here. And that float none, I'm going to change to float right. And we'll see if this actually works. Let's change it to tablet view again. Yeah, that's worked. The button's dropped down there. Fantastic. So I don't need to force that. Let's have a look on mobile. And it should stack the two on top of each other. Fantastic. So I just really want to align these a little bit better on here. And we'll do that in the module. So let's save our code changes. And don't forget that code's down below. Anybody wants to copy and paste it. I'm going to go back into my form. I'm going to scoot it over by using margin auto. So I'm going to go to design. I'm going to go down to spacing. 
And in the margin left and right, I'm simply going to write auto. And hit the little chain. And that'll give it auto padding both sides. And what that's actually done is it's put the two fields in the center, the button slightly to the right, but that's okay. You can adjust it if you want to. Great. Well, let's make all this a little bit smaller. I'm taking out way too much real estate with that code module. So I'm going to grab the bottom of the section. Simply going to drag it up like that to about the size that I want it. Fantastic. Well, let's save our changes now. Exit the Visual Builder. And there's our little form. Let's go on down. And that's looking great on desktop there. Let's have a look at it on responsive. I'm going to hit my F12 key. And let's actually put it on responsive here. I'll drag it out. There's where we start on sort of desktop style. When we get down to about 900, the button should drop off to the bottom there. There it is. And when we get to mobile, they should stack. There we go. So that's going to work on all, all devices nicely. Let's get rid of my inspector now. So there you go, guys. There's how to do a little inline form for your Divi site. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them down below. I'll be happy to answer them or make a demo video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.